Hello YouTube, it's Red Unlocked here. So we're going to do a quick analysis of this challenge I've been doing, uh, choose the worst cap location. So I've done it six times and I've won all six games. And honestly, I cannot figure out why I keep winning. So let's have a little look. Uh, the first three games were on unranked and the second three games were on ranked. Uh, so this is the first game. Really quick recap. Um, so pink had capped here. I'm in the fourth position. And the challenge is just to choose your worst possible cap location and then continue on and try and win the game. And uh, you know, there's no other restrictions thereafter. So in this game, I'm, I'm looking probably a terrible cap here. I'm looking at Spain. The blizzard makes this a decent cap or not, not as bad as Istanbul. And uh, in this game, as you can see, I, well, here you go, I'm talking about it right now, and I end up going on Istanbul. So next to the pink cap. Uh, I did think about the France cap being right next to blue's cap as a, as a bad option, thinking blue would take UK and be strong and be able to take my cap. Uh, but I felt this was even weaker. So um, this game, as it panned out, if we just uh, skip forward, I managed to take the Central Europe turn one. So I only put one on my cap, leaving it really weak. But I did manage to take the bonus and I guarded at the borders. Uh, my plan thereafter was to look at the Orient and uh, see if I could take the Orient, which actually here you can see, I think this is round three. Uh, I end up taking the Orient. Um, by this point, Purple had unfortunately botted. They lost their cap and uh, they'd botted, so obviously they break me. Why wouldn't they? And this game continued on. It was a bit of a strategic affair towards the end game. With a, It turned out into somewhat of a 2v1, blue and pink against me. Uh, but because of the strong position I had in the Orient over here, you can see pink had broke me in this round. Uh, blue had broke me in Central Europe, uh, but I was pretty much everywhere, all over the board, full vision, knew where all the caps were, um, and that information were was essentially to my advantage. You see here, I'm starting to set up somewhat of a card block, uh, and we end up do card block in uh, pink, and uh, the frustration tells, and uh, he ends up slamming, I think, one of these caps down here, uh, and we end up getting the w so let's just uh continue on a bit you see it's at the end but um we have taken out pink over here and there you go and uh it blue didn't put up much of a challenge with only a 27 on his cap so that was game one. Game two, also unranked. We're in the second position here. Yellow had placed their cap. Again, we're talking through various options. My thinking here normally is that Romania, Dynarides and Greece are strong because of this blizzard. Someone's going to cap there. Pink's after me. He's definitely going to cap here. Um, so Ankara would be a terrible cap location. Uh, it turns out Pink didn't go here. No one went here in Dynarides. No one went on Greece. So uh, th this game actually, having chosen this terrible cap location, turned out uh, eventually to be quite a strong game. So I take this bonus first, manage to hold this, uh, and then if we uh, skip forward, you can see I've got uh, all of Central Europe, the Alps, Southeastern Europe. Uh, we found a cap over here. And uh, funnily enough, green is stacking to keep this North Africa bonus. Very uh, noobish play from green. Green takes uh, 67 or 28 and loses 40 troops. Funny old game, this one. But uh, here you can see I'm holding pretty much the entire board. And uh, we kill yellow. We kill green and then eventually win in the 1v1 versus purple who actually was if i remember correctly 
pretty decent player. Okay, so third unranked game. Let's have a look at this one. Okay, so we're in the fifth position. Obviously, here, this Mecca Medina is absolutely terrible. Green has a great cap. Uh, black has a pretty bad cap, but this is even worse. Uh, and then this one was interesting because, as you'd expect, black does take my cap on round one. Uh, so let's take a look at black's turn here. They've taken my cap and uh, leaves us in quite the dire situation. So I'm trying to strategize about, hey, where can I go? What are the locations I can hide in? Um, Pink was toying with me for a while, so he's taken Russia and I'm stuck behind trying to take this bonus slowly. Uh, Pink ends up taking me out of here. And uh, at some point here, you can see I'm down to seven troops. I'm playing solitaire thinking, okay, it's a lost game. Someone just kill me, please. But uh, I hung in there. Eventually, um, something happened. Green and white were having a battle and green failed to fortify. So... Uh, uh, as if by magic, I get a, a, a chance here, but still pretty sure that I'm going to lose the game. You know, yellow's very strong at this point. Uh, the end game here was absolutely insane. So yellow is getting 40, 50 a turn. Pink's getting 30 a turn. Uh, I hardly hold any bonuses the whole game. But I do have, here you see, a 39 cap. And we'll just have a look what happens here so I'm getting 16 a turn I have a set on three and I'm just debating it here but I think uh, you know what let's just go for it and uh, I know from the earlier game that pink's around here somewhere but didn't know exactly where and uh, I didn't know I hadn't seen any of the board so I wondered if there was a cap in Italy it wasn't uh, I knew there must have been a cap up here due to the early game and it's undefended and I'm five out of six and win with 32 troops left over. Crazy, amazing game. And uh, we just move into the fourth game. So, so if I just recap, firstly, the first three unranked games. So what did I learn? Well, I, I learned there was a lot of weird plays, actually, in unranked. So I thought one of the main learnings was, well, maybe everyone's just a noob. But if I went deeper, and after having won three times in ranked, I think what I what we commonly think of as strong caps don't always work out that way because there's so much more involved. Other people are looking at every other player and assessing, oh, he's a noob, oh, she's weak, oh, he, she's strong. And one of our conclusions in in twitch chat was okay well maybe everyone just thinks i'm a noob so that gives me a pass they say i'll beat him in the end game um so that was one theory uh, another theory was we actually changed the avatar at some point to, to try and test that out uh, another theory was you know well maybe the cap location if you put it in a threatening position such that it blocks everybody else then you already become their enemy just through a good cap location you can be a t become a target and that's probably my strongest theory is well how did i manage to win some of these games was well it nobody was specifically targeting me for my strong cap i mean maybe in the the pink game um where i was here maybe this game actually Pink didn't attack me because he thought, well, what's the point of me having this cap? It's just a waste of troops, which would be uh, a good argument. Okay, so continuing on. So this is the uh, first game in ranked. It's our fourth game overall with a challenge. Uh, if you could see here. Now, I don't know. Maybe this is a good cap location. Maybe I, I did the challenge wrong, but never in a million years would I ever put my cap here. And again, to my last point, you think about the psychology that that sends. So where white and orange, I think whites were turned out to be a master. Maybe orange was, or maybe green was. There's a couple of masters in this game. Someone puts their cap there. You're thinking, this guy is a, 
either a psycho or noob or both. Uh, I'm not going to go into him because everything else is coming into me. Uh, you know, a bit of reverse psychology, a bit of um, non-meta meta here. I'm kind of maybe playing against the meta. So here we go. I'm talking about the different locations. Bulgaria looks terrible to my eyes. So I put my cap there. But you know what? By round three or four, if I remember this game correctly, I, I take the Alps. These two are stuck behind. You see the uh, the blizzards in Russia. And actually, uh, the game becomes really interesting. So here we are. I've got the Alps. Green is over in Italy. Uh, we're actually good neighbors for a while. So he's... Um, he takes all of Russia, all of Eastern Europe, uh, the Scandinavia as well. Will I just build against white and orange in, in this corner? Orange, interestingly, eventually ends up breaking green in Russia. So he did my job for me. So you can see here I'm, I'm keeping uh, parity or beyond with troop numbers. I'm getting the bonus. Neither of these are. I'm working on uh, extra bonus up there. Just taking a few troops, a few cards here and there. So now you can see the, the bonus is really paying off. I've got Central Europe. Um, this, this was a really, really strategic game in the end uh, with the way Green was playing. Green was the good, the other master. White was a master, but you can see I've um, got a much better, stronger cap here. And uh, we did just take the white kill. Pink's got this 51 down here. Pink actually capped in uh, Africa over there, West Africa. And as this game went on, built more troops. I had two caps in the middle playing good neighbor with green some more green and pink gone into a war and uh, another crazy end in here so I uh, come around and, and kill orange then we kill pink And now I've got two cattle, so I'm on four out of six. Trade in. Didn't need to do this, but I left the 30 there just in case. Trying to go quick rather than clever. And uh, we do get the 118 out of 119, 100%. And we take down that game. Amazing game. So by this point, I'm... Uh, I'm feeling like I could place my cap at literally anywhere and still win the game. So maybe cap placement really doesn't matter. Uh, in this one, I uh, placed my cap in Portugal. You can see here. Um, my plan was to try and maybe take Spain, hold on Gascony. Purple is a decent player here. So we get at some point where I have a stack in Gascony. Purple recognizes that and thinks I've got nothing on my cap. He sees the five here. He sees the eight here. He thinks my cap's empty. So purple ends up breaking me. Strategic game here. I'm, I'm stuck in the corner, really bad position. Would love it for my cap to be on Gascony rather than Portugal. But you know what? They kind of left me alone and had a fight between themselves for a while and then Orange was fighting no one, so uh, I made a couple of really good plays in this game. So I was stuck in the corner feeling like I'm running out of cards. And we were talking a lot about this in the Twitch chat that it's all about timing. So here I was down to on, my, on five cards, but I still have card to take. But I figured, uh, you know what, I need a second position. So against my, you know, I, I, that was more important than um, keeping this second position alive was more important than, you know, keeping them friendly. Um, at that point, Orange goes to war with me. Okay, fine. 
he really doesn't like that uh you see he takes a lot out there but he does have another stack he was guarding on scotland so orange hates me black is probably not too fond although black has got problems with purple uh, but this play for me it was really important to get that external stack anyway you see we go back and forth i get stuck again purple gets takes the cap and uh I ended up in this position where I'm stacking here, um, taking a card, one at a time, black's not giving me a card. Uh, I play a really good play soon, where I take my big stack, it's got three cards, and uh, eventually we end up uh, able to kill purple. Not in this one, but uh, very soon. Keep black out. This is my kill. See, I'm stacking next to the cap here. Black's trying a card block while well, I'm thinking about the um, cap run at this point. At which point will I have access to the London cap? So I need black to open me here. And eventually black does open me and uh, we do the cap run. So what did I learn in this game? Again, strategy, being dynamic, being able to play the game as it is and not being caught up with the rules of cap positioning and um, you know just thinking about the game strategically is far more important than just a cap location. Of course, if you can combine the two, play strategically and have a good cap, then you're probably uh, onto a winner. So then, final game. Uh, we won't spend too much longer here, but uh, let's just have a look at this. So, um, just having a look around, we end up deciding that Certe is indeed the worst cap location. So, look, with the Blizzard locations, someone is definitely going to be capping in Italy. Um, I can't imagine no, anyone not being in Italy. So, again, I'm thinking strategically that if I'm capping here I must have an external position unfortunately blue didn't join this game and uh, you'll see in a sec that I do end up taking the uh, position in Central Europe but blue breaks me there you can see that uh, purple has his cap over here he's uh, found mine and he gets pissed off course he uh, reacts emotionally and not strategically um, so blue breaks me first then uh, purple after a while just breaks me forever but I ended up having been able to hold this behind blue and keeping my keeping this cap on very low number And anyway, so uh, we end up killing purple, we end up killing blue. Uh, we end up having a really strong position in this game. And um, just remembering how the end game went. So I think white uh, and black were already fighting a lot of the game. So uh, I just had an end game where because I had won my battle with purple over here where they were fighting each other and forgot a little bit about me and then uh, this may even be the turn where I do the cap run see the 21 there is a cap down here that we saw at the start of the game 4 out of 6, 5 out of 6 and GG so there you go. That is the challenge. We have uh, been speaking about this and trying to make it, how can we make it harder? How can we learn from it? But ultimately, my conclusion is that cap location is only one of the many variables. Thinking strategically, being dynamic, 
uh, a little bit lucky, yes, in, in, at times, but uh, um, not necessarily being too static in strategy, I think is, is the best uh, approach. So hope you enjoyed and uh, see you next time. Thanks a lot. Oh, by the way, um, all of these games are on uh, YouTube, the full games. So if you're interested, then you can go check them out uh, as well. Um, and yeah, don't forget to uh, to like and subscribe if uh, if this is interesting for you. Thanks so much. Bye now.